problem using long division is um, synthetic division, we can only use synthetic division when our divisor is linear, meaning it's in the form of x, k, x minus k. Do you guys see linear has an exponent of 1? Do you guys see how this is quadratic? So anytime you're asked to do division and your divisor is nonlinear, you have to use long division. You cannot use synthetic division. All right. If you don't remember synthetic division, we're going to go over that again later today. So polynomials, though, is a little bit different. If you guys remember, when we did my last problem, I simply just took whatever my divisor was and I divided it into it, correct? But when we have polynomials, you have expressions that are separated by addition and subtraction. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm only going to use my first term. Make sure that your divisor is in standard form, meaning the highest power going down to the lowest power. And what you're going to do is you're only going to divide your first term into your dividend. So we say x squared divides into 8x cubed. How many times does x squared divide into 8x cubed? 8, 8x. Basically, I'm just asking you this. 8x cubed, how many times does x squared divide into that? Well, obviously 8 times. x cubed divided by x is just x, right? Anybody have any questions on that? Now, since my quotient, I did this times, what I have to do is previously we just multiplied this by our divisor, right? But now, again, our divisor is separated by addition or subtraction. So we have to multiply it times both of our terms. So when I multiply by both of our terms, I get 8x cubed um, minus 24x squared. Huh? It's just an x, sorry. So one thing you guys notice is since that's just an x, I can't really subtract those, right? They're not like terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that under the x squared, or sorry, 24x. Okay. If there's no x squared, we can always use a substitute for that by using 0x squared. That's what we call a place value. Because what's 0 times x squared? 0. It's like it's not even there. But I always like to subtract things from one another. So I put a place value in there. Now, just like we did before, we subtract the rows. Please remember to always revisit this subtraction. 8x cubed minus 8x cubed is 0x cubed, right? 5x squared minus. 0x squared is 5x squared. Negative 12x minus a negative 24. Minus a negative turns it to a positive. So it's negative 12x plus 24x, which would be a positive 12x. Okay. Then we do the process all over again. Now we go back and we say, all right. How many times does x squared divide into 5x squared? Plus 5 times. You could. It's not like necessary, but I only, I only drop it when it's necessary. But if you want to show it there, you, there's nothing wrong with dropping the 10. Um, I, that's just my personal way of doing it. I don't do that, but it's nothing wrong with doing that. So x squared divides into 5x squared 5 times. Then I do just like I did before. I have to multiply this times 5 times 5x five squared is going to be a 5x squared. 5 times negative 3 is going to be a negative 15. And again, see now, I need that 10, right? So I will bring it down. And then to give me a place value for this, I'll use plus 0x. Then again, I go back to this and I do the same thing. I subtract. So when you guys do this, 5x squared minus 5x squared, 12x minus 0x is going to be a 12x. 10 minus a negative 15 is going to be like plus 15, which would be a plus 25. Now, does x squared minus 3 divide into this? No. So this is our remainder. So your quotient, the way that we write our quotient, 
is x squared plus 5 plus your remainder divided by your divisor. So when you have a remainder, make sure you write it as quotient plus remainder over divisor. Yes? So whenever we get the 8x at the top for the answer, we would cross the 8x to the third out. We'd like minus it from the 8x third in the problem just so we don't have to deal with that anymore and make it a 0. Like every time we Yeah, you always get the same. When you mul when you, whatever answer you get, when you multiply it by the first term, you should always have it cancel out or add to 0. Always. And if it doesn't, then you did something. Then you didn't divide right. Anybody have any questions on that?